Hey y'all, still working on exam three review. I'm trying to do like a shorter videos, honestly. Um, let's go ahead and go to the review. Um, we're actually on problems 26, 27, 28, and 29 right now. The directions say to solve the logarithmic equation. Be sure to reject any value that is not in the domain of the original logarithmic expression and to give the exact answer. So that second sentence right there is uh, basically just saying, you know, if you find a value for X and, um, you know, it causes you to, um, like, take the log of a negative number, well, we know we can't do that. So that value would be rejected. Um, and that's really it. Most, like, X equals a negative number um, will automatically be rejected as well really just depends on what the actual equation is. Okay, so where are we? Is it 26? Yes. So we have log base form of x minus 4 equals negative 1. The way you solve a logarithmic equation is you're actually going to put it into exponential form. And so this is saying 4 to the negative one power equals x minus four. My exponent rules say four to the negative one power is one over four equals x minus four. To isolate the x on the right hand side, I would add four to both sides. And then just doing a, a way that I, you know, add fractions, um, just kind of a little bit of a shortcut. I know that I need to have four as a common denominator. Um, four divided by four is one. One times one is one. Four divided by one is four. Four times four is 16, right? So let me go ahead and bring down that sign. Um, and then what I get here in the numerator is one plus 16 is 17 over four equals my X. And then um, I believe I put in the review, if you wrote this, that is the same thing, okay? Okay, so that took up a lot of room because I was kind of down some. Let's go ahead and do problem 27. Twenty seven says log base nine of ten plus log base nine of x equals one. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is I actually need to get it into just a single logarithm. Um, I would use the product rule here to condense this, and what I would get is log base nine of 10 X equals one. And then once you have it in this form, now I can go ahead and change it into exponential form. This is actually saying nine to the first power equals 10 X. Um, that's just nine, right? Nine equals 10 X. And so I would divide by 10 and I would get nine tenths equals x. That would be your answer here as well as that right there. Okay, so now we're going to look at problem 28. I'm actually going to go ahead and erase this one, y'all. So problem 28 says log of x log of x plus log of x plus 1 equals log 42. The goal would be to get it to one log um, on the left-hand side. And because that is a sum, it's actually going to be a product. So I get log of x, and then that's going to be times x plus 1 equals log of 42. And then what I'm going to do here is 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, they are both written with a log. Hold on, I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at my notes. I went from that to, um, I guess because they're both written as a log. Uh, what I did was I just put these two equal to each other. I hate sometimes I skip steps and then I confuse myself like really bad. I think that's probably why I tell y'all don't skip steps. I don't do it all the time, but when I do, I confuse myself. <laughs> yes. So we're going to actually set, um, this will help me. Let me just write it. So it's not just in my head, but it's actually out loud. Um, y'all, if you have log, um, I'm trying to think we need to have a B here of M and then you have log. We need to have a B here of N. Uh, what you can do is just set M and N equal to each other. Um, I, I just can't for the life of me remember if I called this something, if this is a rule that has a name and I just can't remember it. Um, but that's what I'm doing here. Okay. These are both the same log, same base. Um, and so I'm going to set my M and my N equal to each other. Okay. Hopefully that makes more sense. So um, if y'all are okay with it, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. I get X squared plus X equals 42. I need to move by 42. I get X squared plus X, a negative 42 equals zero. Um, I could go ahead and just factor this. Six and seven would be my factors. My middle term is positive, so my larger number needs to be positive. Zero factor property just states that if you have factors set equal to zero, what you do is you set each factor equal to zero. And so what I would get is x equals six or x equals a negative seven. Um, if we were to plug in the negative seven, um, that would actually not be in the domain of the original logarithmic equation um, or expressions. Uh, and so what that would mean is that my answer would just be x equals 6, which if you wrote like this would be accepted. Okay, so I should have enough room to do 29. 29 is natural log of x plus natural log of x plus, sorry, minus one <clears throat> um, equals to natural log of 42. Yes, exact same problem. The only difference is that negative sign right there. So we want to go ahead and condense this into one natural log. We would have natural log of x of x minus one equals natural log of 42. They're both in natural log um, like form. They're both expressed with a natural log. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and set my m equal to my n. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute. I get x2, negative x equals 42. I would move my 42. And then I would go ahead and factor this. Still 6 and 7, but that middle term is actually a negative 1. And so what I need to do is make sure that my largest number is negative. Y'all already kind of see what's going on here. And so setting these equal to zero, I would get um, X equals negative six or X equals seven. And so my answer would be X equals seven, or you could write it in this form right here. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. I'm going to, I'm trying to look at it right now. I'm going to come back and do the exponential growth and decay problems. Um, just that way we have a whole bunch of little short videos to watch. And if y'all have questions, make sure y'all ask. Okay, thanks. Bye.